One morning we wake up and something's off. The Wi-Fi works, the website loads. Our passwords are still there, they're just not ours anymore. Our bank accounts, still open for someone else. Our messages, already read. The lock we built our digital world around just opened. This isn't the start of a science fiction movie. This is just math, finally catching up. And it's not coming decades from now. It's already en route. We call it Q-Day. The moment when quantum computers grow big enough, stable enough, smart enough to tear through every piece of encryption holding the modern world together. Everything we do online, your banking, your browsing, your baby photos is guarded by a trick, a mathematical trick. One that works because no normal computer can solve it in time, we assumed the lock would outlast the key maker. But what happens when we're wrong? We always thought the end of encryption would come from hackers, or maybe a genius. Instead, it came from possibility. We built machines that don't just calculate, they superpose. They don't ask, is it A or B? They ask, why not both until I know for sure? In a normal computer, every bit is a coin, heads or tails. In a quantum one, the coins spin, shimmer, and land in all states at once, until measured. Which is poetic and also terrifying. Because with just enough qubits, they can solve in seconds what would take our best machines longer than the age of the universe. In 2024, Google's Willow chip corrected its own errors faster than they could accumulate. That's like building a bridge while it's falling and still crossing it. IBM's Condor passed 1,000 qubits, a milestone many said would take a decade longer. And in China? Zhuchangji 3.0 solved a problem a supercomputer would need 5 billion years to finish in just seconds. These aren't full-blown code breakers, not yet, but they're not toys anymore, and we're no longer ahead of the curve. We're just barely in front of it. But if these machines are growing smarter by the month, how long until they grow dangerous? The moment a quantum computer gets smart enough to break the locks we've used for 50 years, it's not marked on any official calendar. But every year, every new breakthrough, Google, IBM, China, it ticks closer. Some experts say it won't happen for 20 years, others say 10, but nearly no one says never anymore. That's the part nobody talks about. The quantum computers of tomorrow are already a threat, today. Because if you intercept encrypted data now, you can just wait store it, let it rot in a vault, then crack it open. When the math finally gives out, we used to say data had a shelf life. Now, quantum says it has an expiration date. Now that we are down the rabbit hole, let's pause and ask. If everything encrypted was suddenly vulnerable, what would be the first thing you lost? Your bank account, your health records, your old chat logs, or maybe your identity itself? Drop your guess in the comments, and while you're there, ask yourself if Q-Day hit tomorrow, would you even know it happened? But we did what we always do when reality shifts under us. We scrambled. We met in rooms with no windows, and we started building a new lock. The United States turned first to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. After six years of global vetting and cryptanalysis, they announced the first ever quantum-resistant encryption standards. Unlike RSA or ECC, these new algorithms are built to survive the quantum storm. They use lattices, hashes, code structures, puzzles even a quantum computer can't solve efficiently. Not yet. Maybe not ever. In March 2024, Apple made a quiet update. A new protocol, PQ3, began silently encrypting your iMessages with quantum safe keys, just in case. Signal followed suit, a messaging app born from paranoia, now rearmed for the quantum era. It's clunky, slower, less efficient, but it just might work. The problem isn't invention, it's scale. Thousands of servers, millions of endpoints, all running encryption that someday might as well be graffiti. The US government needs an estimated $7.1 billion to migrate its systems by 2035. The EU launched a PQC roadmap in 2024 to synchronize across all member states. China, Canada, Japan, they're all racing the same clock. It's not just tech, it's logistics, training, diplomacy, panic. Because if even one sector lags, finance, defense, energy, the whole chain remains breakable. There is no turning quantum off, but we can get ahead of it. If we move fast enough, then maybe, just maybe, Q-Day will come and nothing will fall. The plans are in motion, the standards are set. 
we've started building the new locks. But what if someone deploys Quantum first and keeps it secret? We thought we'd hear it coming. That Q day would arrive with fire, with headlines, with a bang. But instead it was silent. A line of code, a prime number factored, a lock picked so cleanly that no alarm even triggered. On the surface, nothing changed. Websites still loaded, banks still opened. But underneath it all, math collapsed and trust, which once powered everything, began to rot. Digital signatures, gone. Encryption, broken, banks panicked, transfers froze. Some people tried to cash out, others found their savings, gone. Crypto, dead on arrival. Anyone who ever shared a public key just got wiped. Infrastructure doesn't explode when encryption fails. It forgets, it loses context, loses memory. The machines still hum, the lights still blink, but the instructions, once secured by math, become noise. Electricity demands spikes. A surge in Ohio triggers blackouts in Michigan, then Ontario. Grid operators can't tell what's real. Fake load balancing commands flood the system. Solar farms disconnect automatically on orders that never came. Aviation runs on trust, trusted GPS, trusted weather, trusted traffic control. Now, pilots question every instruction. Glitches become disasters. A near miss over the Atlantic, a cargo plane rerouted into restricted airspace. Rail systems rely on encrypted switches. Traffic lights respond to digital commands. When those commands go quantum forged, metal hits metal. Firewalls don't just guard data, they protect lives. 911 calls are spoofed. Dispatch systems crash. Responders arrive at fake scenes while real emergencies burn. Manifest forged, origin data overwritten. Every step, trusted by a digital signature, now lies. Shelves empty, cold chains fail. Food spoils in transit because the shipment was certified. It wasn't. Satellites drift out of sync. GPS timing fails. Military satellites send no reply. Telecom companies cut off internal routing updates. Calls fail. Emergency frequencies jammed with synthetic noise. We thought infrastructure meant steel, wires, concrete. But it's none of those. It's encryption. It's a digital nervous system. And now it's glitching, twitching, not because it was attacked, but because it can no longer trust itself. Then came the lies, real ones. Deep fakes backed by real cryptographic signatures, verified videos, impossible truths. Presidents say things they never said. Doctors prescribe drugs they never authorized. Leaked documents undo decades of diplomacy. Real or fake, who knows? Cash becomes king. Payments are local. Handshakes and bartering. Pharmacies run out of insulin. Grocery deliveries never arrive. It's not lawless, not yet, but it's slipping. Cities collapse inward, some governments dissolve quietly, others declare digital martial law. The internet shatters, local networks rise, disconnected, cautious. The internet didn't go offline, it went tribal, fragmented into enclaves, a dozen regional splinter nets form, Chinanet, Eurogrid, the American mesh. Each one verifies itself and trusts no one else. Global finance never recovered. Credit cards became bookmarks, crypto became radioactive. What's left? Paper, cash, gold, and trust. Face to face. Without identity, governments faded. Some dissolved, some calcified. A few reinvented themselves, locally, analog, accountable. Others just stopped asking questions. Healthcare became personal, as in, if you didn't know the patient, you didn't treat them. Medical records are now paper. Signatures are biometric. Genomes are sequenced and printed, folded, filed, locked in drawers. Science didn't die, it rebooted. Peer review is now face-to-face. -face. Journals are handwritten, indexed by interns. AI is banned in research, too easily poisoned. Universities no longer connect, they preserve. Strangely, some things returned. Families sat together again, strangers became communities, local trust, face, voice, eye contact, became more powerful than the cloud ever was. So, if quantum computers crack the world tomorrow, what would you stop trusting first? Your, your bank, your vote, your memories? Drop your answer in the comments because the real question isn't, could this happen? It's already happening. The question is, will we be ready when the locks break?